there is this important graph that you guys need to know. Um, and so what I'm going to quickly do is I want you to just remember Y is equal to MX plus C. And I want you to remember that this part here is the Y intercept. This part here is the gradient. Okay, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to take the formula that we just learned about, which goes like this. Okay, then I'm going to change this one over here. I'm going to change that into the other formula that I showed you. You know, when we said that E can also be written as H, F. See, I even showed you here. So I'm just going to replace it with that. So that's going to give us H, F equals to W, zero plus E, K. What I am then going to do is I am going to... Um, what I want to do, I think that, that would be confusing. I'm going to leave the EK on the right, and I'm going to take this over to the left. Okay. Then I'm going to rearrange it so that the EK is on the left. And so I'm just switching it around. Just looks a bit easier. Okay. And so there we go. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Y equals to MX plus C. And so remember that this over here is the gradient. And this over here, whoopsie, this one here is the y-intercept. And then your y-axis and your x-axis. So then I'm going to go plot a graph now. And so, of course, we normally say y and x, but... In this one, we are going to use our y-axis is now going to be EK. And your teacher is actually going to call it EK max. We're going to call it EK max. It means the maximum kinetic energy. Don't worry about it. It's the same as the kinetic energy. Um, we're just going to call it EK max, and that's measured in joules. Okay. And then our x-axis is going to be the frequency. So this will be frequency. And what we're then going to do is we are going to realize that the y-intercept is always this one, which is this one. And so that's going to have a negative value. So I'm going to put my y-intercept as some type of negative value, maybe over here. And then I want you to realize that the gradient is H. Now remember that H is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. So it's a positive number. So the gradient of the line will be positive. So I'm just going to do something like that now. There's a positive line. Okay. Now, so what I want you to remember when they give you a graph like this in the test is that this is the, 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 the gradient is going to be the same as H. See that? Okay, so the gradient is H. Your y-axis is going to be EK max. And your y-intercept is going to be negative work function. Okay. Then this part over here also has a special name. This is going to be your threshold frequency. Remember what the threshold frequency is. It's the minimum frequency needed in order to release an electron. So if your frequency was somewhere over here, the frequency of your light, then look at the Y value. It's somewhere over here. And so if you look at the Y value there, it's got a negative. So it means that your kinetic energy is negative, which is impossible. So that means that if your light has a frequency anywhere over here, 
then nothing is going to happen. Okay. But as soon as you get your frequency to be a little bit bigger, like over here, then all of a sudden, if you look at the Y value, it's now a positive number. So it means that the electrons are now being released from the metal. So it means that this point over here is the point, is the minimum frequency that you need in order to release the electron. And so that is the threshold frequency. Okay. Excellent, guys. So that's that. Let's go to the next slide where we've got a summary of this graph. So here we have it. We know that the gradient of the line, the gradient of the line is H, Planck's constant. We know that this here is your threshold frequency. And we know that your y-intercept is negative work function. And then the y-axis is called the maximum kinetic energy. And the x-axis is the frequency of the light.